Hi guys, my name is Varodante, and welcome back to Overpaint. Which means I go through my Patreon page and check out all of your guys' artwork that you submitted to me during November. Yeah, and see if I can give you some advice and maybe fix something. First patient is Nakras. Welcome back, Vic. Hi again, Boro. Back again for round 3 with some fan art. This is Artemy Burak, a surgeon of the steppe from the Russian horror game Pathologic 2. This is the part where I stop talking about it, otherwise you'd become my hostage and be forced to read an essay about how much I love this game. Thank you, I will check it out one day. For the art part, I focused on applying what you said about lighting positioning. I thought the sunset reflection from the blood would make a cool bounce light on the bowl and in other shadows. I dimmed down the torch light and made it a bit cooler, so as not to clash too much with the sunset and the blood reflection. But I guess I'm left a bit unsatisfied about the shape design in my brushwork as well as the texture of surfaces. Yeah, good point about toning down the torch light. That's something I've been talking about where you shouldn't make all the lights equally strong. Like, choose the main one, the main light, the main object. You should never have anything of the same value. So, good point on that. As usual, thank you for all the help you've given me and others thus far. No problem. Excited to see what tips you have for this piece. Well, let's take a look. So, the first thing I want to do to be able to take a look, I'll make the image brighter overall, only both layers. So, I started by separating the two grounds on the image, because I think I'll want to move things around a bit. But let's see, I really want to like raise that dynamic range, because we're really like in the bottom third, all of the details were happening there. Like, I get it, it definitely should be a dark scene and everything, but as I always say, our eyes adjusted. Something like this, uh, I'll also probably compensate for all of this extra contrast by lowering the saturation a bit, so generally the colors would remain kind of the same. I think it worked. Now I can actually see things. Now let's continue with actually going ahead and just removing the torch. Here's the thing, we don't have to see it. It doesn't really bring a lot of information to us, and it's really just struggled in there, like it has no place in there. Even though it's there, it's not actually there. Maybe I'll find a better place for it, but I won't get out of my way to, you know, show exactly the thing. Same as we're not showing the sun to show the sunset, you know? That's generally like a naive thing to go about it, so it's really not necessary. And yeah, I think I feel like going a bit lower, like this. Maybe that way we'll find a bit of a better place for the torch this way. But generally, like, um, no matter how much of an action we have here, the face, it, it shouldn't be that, you know, close to the edge, upper edge of the canvas. Like, it's almost fine, but I couldn't think about anything else but moving the head lower. Also, we kind of got rid of the tangent that I also wanted to fix with this silhouette of the cow. At first I thought it was like satanic sacrifice, but now it's like specifically cow themed, like cows flying around, like spirits of cows. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> you didn't get into the details about the game, so I'm just coming up with my own theories. Now, let's think a little bit about the lighting. There was a big issue, like when I first looked at the picture, it was really hard to understand where the cow is happening. Cow, bull, bull, right? Because I felt like this is the only thing we're actually seeing, and then I thought like, is this like a woman's breast or something he's grabbing? Then you notice this thing, so it's really like, falling apart a little bit due to confusing contrast and not exactly recognizable shape design. So there's definitely issues with that. Now my main, like, what I'm struggling with the most right now with is um, trying to figure out how to fix it by just painting over. <laughs> First of all, the thing I want to say, you have this reflected light from the blood, which is cool. I like that. 
but here's the thing when something is laying down on the surface so let's look at like this area right here and like rotate it we'll be looking at it like this right so we have the cow pretty busy composition let's do another another one so the cow is laying like this there's the altar or whatever the table and it's like this right and we are looking at it from that side we're here and we're looking at this dissection from a side now there is uh, the sunlight that goes like this well from a side but generally from the top as well what i'm trying to say is there's no sunlight in here there's a shadow from the bull going on in this part so the bright red surface only starts here and that's where we have the reflected light going on now if that's the case don't you think that the gradient of brightness would be quite different on the cow from the bottom in here you have the brightest spot really close to the very bottom of the cow of the ball whatever let's just stick to cow it works better for me i don't know and it's like confusing it feels like it's something different because of that why is there like a surface but then either like this is a foggy glow from the surface of the blood and that's it not really the lighting on the cow or something completely different and because of that the super sharp line in here feels like it's just a different object starting or something like that one thing i can say for sure right now is that generally the lighting should really spread all over like this and becoming actually a little bit darker as we approach this darker corner in here where there's no lit blood and no reflected light from it so we're just going darker there and also like actually darker not just grayer and there will be a little bit of that terminator area like a little edge between facing downwards and upwards and that's exactly happening on this um, spine edge right that's pretty much what we're looking at i got that now another thing i'll try to maybe polish this a little bit so it would actually work <laughs> But another thing is uh, the geometry of these cuts. They're very like straight lines facing right at us. And because of that, they really don't support the round surface on the cow. It feels off. Like if the lines are all so straight, that means it's like a flat wall we're looking at. It can't be anything round. There's no way all of these cuts would be straight to us from our single point of view. Maybe one of them would accidentally become like an actual straight line if it would be like here, but the rest would start curving around like that around the cylindrical shape. So yeah, let's take care of that cow torso. I wonder if this is actually the way uh, Bull's uh, attachment of horns works, or is it just in cartoons like that? <laughs> I should look it up. Okay, how about a photo? What the hell? I never said artwork. Photo. Thank you. At least, like, two photos. So, apparently there's uh, quite a lot of hair going on in that, oh, well, fur going on in that area. But generally, yeah, it's like this cylinder. The only thing is, um, well, that's a cow. We need a bull. The only thing is, it's like obviously not as sharp, like perfectly wrapping around, you know, and having like a fold in, like the same kind of fold we have in here. It's like going like that. I looked it up, it's not a thing. So... I would tone it down, that's for sure, because that looked like immediately, is this a Tom and Jerry crossover episode? <laughs> and yeah, I would also maybe, uh, you know, work in a little bit of those uh, just uh, fur. There's pretty much always at least some kind of hairstyle going on. Well, this one is like super fuzzy nothingness, <laughs> but generally there's like, it's a good place for some kind of hair to show up. Fur, it's not hair. Now, another thing I would definitely want to do is, like, removing this contrast. It really, it, it's overworked. There's no actual reason to it, as far as I can tell, you know? Uh, I have no problems with, the, with these, uh, whatever they are, stems of some kind of foliage going on in front. Some kind of amber waves in here. But 
like I'm just gonna remove them because I need to do bigger changes underneath. So I would almost just stick to this really, but we'll see, maybe I'll uh, actually do something like the blood streams on, on this wall coming down from the altar table thing, they should pretty much show up as black. Uh, you had so many highlights caught by them and everything. Generally possible, but just because they're so intense and catching all this contrast and highlights, it's really hard to evaluate where the hell we are and which actual angles the overall surface is taking, you know? You defined the torches lighting up the scene over there and the sunlight over there. Let's give the lighting some rest in here. There's nothing here. Why not make it darker? And yeah, I'll show probably the consistent well, consistent, um, not so consistent, but uh, like this line catching the, the sunlight at the very edge of this table ground altar thing all over to the end. Since we have the reflected light from the blood to the end, that means the whole surface is lit. And yeah, that's where we probably can show a little bit of the red colors of the actual blood too. Since it's there, obviously, giving so much reflection and all, it should be going on. But the moment it goes down in here, it becomes like more of a black color. And maybe an occasional highlight, sure. But you can see how I'm making it very subtle, like complementary. Now let's get back to those cuts. I think cuts are the good place to really support the whole shape, you know, to make sure that the viewer can see it immediately. So I would do a cut like this in here. And you had... These are like almost symbols or not? Like they're a very specific shape. I'll repeat them because whatever. We can do it. What if it's a thing? But yeah, the geometries should still be going on. It's still cool. Because like, the shapes of these cuts are initially weird, like such L-shaped cuts, like what do they mean? And then they're also super straight, you're not even looking for a body <laughs> under these shapes, you know, they're very unusual. That's like a rule generally, the more unusual thing you're uh, drawing, painting, the more specific with details you should be, the less crazy you should go with contrasts and weird lights, because if you're like overworking the idea all over the place, what exactly is the viewer should be impressed by right now? By the lighting? By the cuts? By what? There's so many things in one place, that's not a good strategy. I almost feel like adding a little bit of red in here as well. Like, sure, there's this edge and everything, but, you know, there's probably a somewhat of a considerable surface of that blood lighting up from the bottom. If it's so strong in here, it could catch up a little bit even after this edge of the spine. Okay, now let's show some of that blood in here. It's still really confused. Is this, like, sacrifice, but the guy's, like, name is Surgeon of Step? Yeah, I don't know, doesn't seem reasonable that suddenly the rim lighting disappears here. Is it like a shadow from this thing? Then it's like very specific, then the light is actually from over there, not really from a side. If it's from a side, the shadow from this rock shouldn't be going on. It's like a different angle, in case it is what I think it is. And here we're generally going down everywhere, you know, there should be this, uh, some of this lighting going on pretty much all the time. Now the streams of blood in here, I would go with making them like a lot more strong and confident. These are pretty deep cuts, like real deep. There should be quite a lot of blood released, not to mention there's obviously a lot of it at the bottom doing the whole reflection work. So there should be like a lot of lines like this going on, not just few very dry ones. Generally the concept is like striking and cool, but pretty complex. Uh, I keep mentioning that, but yeah, it's like 
you did a good job as is is just a really hard thing you decided to show with no simplifications in terms of angle of the camera at least or something you know we're really looking at the back of an animal with weird cuts and very specific lighting <laughs> like so many things that really require to be deciphered unless you make them very like readable as hell so I'm just trying to do that. Yeah, also, red highlights, since there's red light from the bottom, uh, shiny blood will be reflecting more of itself from the bottom. So all these guys will be definitely reflective with specifically red color. In here, no. These highlights, I'll add them, they'll be of the, like, bright yellow color because they're reflecting the sun, but these guys right here, they're all reflecting the blood from the bottom. Maybe you did that yourself. Not really, you didn't go too much into it. Generally, I'm making things a lot brighter from the bottom, because why not have some fun? Yeah, let's do those highlights that I mentioned. So, like this color, maybe a little bit. I, I don't think it's gonna be that readable. Even when you see blood, like in the movies, at this kind of angle and everything, it's not exactly recognizable. So it's gonna be looking quite weird in any case. Okay, no one was asking me to do this part, but if I would be working on this, I would probably make the shading on the guy a bit more like this. So yeah, I'm guessing this is what I would do. We may make the cuts a bit more red, so they wouldn't be like black void, since they're probably really filled up with blood in there. But overall, I think my advice here is choose one complex thing at a time. Not complex to you, but complex to, you know, see. If it's a complex scene, don't show it in too complex of a lighting, at too complex of an angles. Some things should let you actually see what's going on. <laughs> also, there shouldn't be any light over there. Unless you're just going with cool magical glows, there's no actual reason. And this feels a bit more three-dimensional and real. And maybe a little bit of this volumetric would also work to actually show the difference in distances. So, something like that. Second patient is Sam Ann. Hi, Sam Ann. Hi, Boro. First time poster here. This is my first painting in about two years of hiatus due to lack of motivation, and I would like an in-depth critique. This is fan art of the band Sleep Token, and I really pushed myself with this one and tried to do some dramatic lighting and push the shadows more than I have previously, since one of your most common critiques is people are a little too shy with shadows. That's true. Kinda went the same round this time, though. <laughs> I was going for something that read as neo-religious, but I want to know if that comes across in the painting. Oh, it sure does. Looks pretty dope. I think the part I am the most unsure about is the symbol painted on the chest, since it isn't very visible. Thank you for your time, Sam. Alright, Sam, and let's see what we can do. Overall, yeah, really liking the picture. Uh, I really like that, as you said, you really like focused on the lighting and just went with it with this one lighting, which is uh, a good thing to do. I'll start with adding some space at the bottom. I feel like his elbows really need some space like this. Now, I'll uh, also select the guy. I believe this is the front man. I'm gonna cut him out of the background and I'll make him a lot darker. Because one thing that you need to really follow when you're going f with like the light from the back is just only rim lighting and that's it, is that in this situation, especially with all the volumetric, like these uh, fogs going on around, you get the contrast of like them being the shadow silhouette in front of the bright background. So the contrast needs to have a specific direction. The dude darker than the background. That's like the whole point of this lighting in a way. So maybe I would start with just doing this 
then I'll desaturate a little bit, and that'll be something. We will probably lose quite a lot of detail. Not really lose it, we'll lose contrast on it, but this is the point. <laughs> This is dramatic lighting. This is not how you show details. This is how you show the mood. Uh, I think that's the way the shape goes. So yeah, I'm trying to slightly like rotate it a little bit. It seems like it needs to be that way since overall like the center would be somewhere in here. And if it's here, that means the torso is slightly rotated. So I'm just uh, naturally trying to also make it a little bit rotated. Yeah, like, see, right here, even with a lot of light directly shooting at the guy, he's still like the dark silhouette on that bright red background. And if we go more dramatic, it's literally the black silhouette. So that's, that's what you really want to go for. That's why you use this lighting, is to appear black. Also, I feel like uh, his uh, body type is slimmer, so I would make like the arms, the hands a bit thinner like this, more bony maybe a little bit. Now, I'm not sure if it's a thing. Generally, I can see that the robe, like it's black, so not really a thing. Maybe you want it to show a little bit of translucency, like, you know, cloth lit from the back showing up like this all together. Then, like in this case, if you want to go with that, you pretty much go very consistently sort of like this. And then it really starts looking like that. You see, it, it starts uh, showing that. And when there's uh, a stronger angle, when it starts curving away from the light at the edge in here, that's where it starts like getting darker. But again, I wouldn't say it's a thing with like black color, black cloth. It's not, it doesn't do that. It doesn't go translucent. And yeah, like I'm adding a little bit of like extra foggy glow around his silhouette just to support it and make it a bit uh, more of a striking contrast. Not necessary. And if you overdo it, it will look too much like an old school painting in a way. Still kind of a cool thing. <laughs> if used wisely. Honestly, I feel like actually going away from these bright pink silhouettes all together. Like ever so slightly in here maybe because it's like very direct reflection, not lighting, like reflection. But in here it will be a lot more realistic and readable and effective without these. They just don't look right. Like this is literally cooler simpler and cooler at the same time. Like you see, you can add obviously lighting from the back, but first of all, if the camera is directly from the front, like only very strong angles will be catching that light. And in most cases, it's still like darker than the background. So you just show some detail on the robe with it, but it still stays darker than the background. It's still the dark silhouette. This is the important part, like the contrast shouldn't be reversed. It should be the dark shape on the bright background everywhere. Well, with super rare exceptions, but we're not really looking for an exception here. Like this, you see, I'm lighting it. I'm doing it, guys. I'm doing it, but it's still a lot darker than the actual bright smoke going on all over the place. So yes, something like that, trying to work in a little bit more uh, the, the this uh, logo in here. Like the main thing uh, about making it look like it's actually painted on the surface of the torso is of course making it not that consistent, but you generally like try to add some soft shapes and everything, you know? Also, I'm making like thin shape out of it. It's not exactly what you intended, I can see. Let's make it a bit thicker. It's like spray painted or something, maybe. But generally, introducing lighting, like like let's say there's a chest shadow going on from the boobs in here somehow, you know? If you show that, that immediately, of course, gives an idea that this is probably following a certain surface. And something like this, probably a little bit of the shadow from the robe hanging next to it. Like, I don't even really think I did good anatomy um, details here with this shadow, but 
it does feel like it's already following a certain surface there. And yeah, this whole thing, providing strong angles, there will be more brightness going on there. Probably a little something of a gap between the thumb and the rest of the palm. So yeah, there we go. I think this is what will make the picture a bit more striking. Generally, you already had all of it going on, but just like really understanding what kind of contrast you're going for with this type of lighting lets you, you know, make it a lot more striking and use the benefits of this lighting without having to, you know, dedicate a lot of time on certain details, trying to show everything, whereas literally showing it makes it worse of a picture because it takes away from that beautiful contrast. So yeah, when you let it go and just let the lighting do its job, I think it works pretty cool. Still not sure about this uh, translucency, but it's just an example. If you don't like it, you can just not do it. Keep it black in there. It would be cool as well. But yeah, neo-religious, as you said, style, totally cool. Reminded me of the TV show called New Pope, opening sequences with this kind of style. And yeah, I'll make sure to check out the band. Hope it's not trap. Third patient today is James Carney. Hi, James. Dear Boro, happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to everyone. I wanted to thank you for doing an overpaint of my daughter's Pomeranian back in early 2020. I really appreciate your comments back then and love those episodes. I am back again with Pom Pom and his new sister, Millie. My daughter wanted them dressed up and found me some options online. Here's my work inspired by her selections. I tried for a better background, but still a simple background kind of smudged like a photo studio might use. I'm interested in any comments on the composition and any thoughts you have. My only limit was I had to put both into the piece and worked with photos of headshots. I'm not really good at composing without a reference. Thank you, Jim Carney. All right, Jim, let's take a look. So uh, since you are going for this like a classical story, classical painting, I would go for like a classical composition. And if we go for that, the dog's head is kind of falling out of the picture and we need to fix that. So I'm going to do just that. Probably like this. So it's more symmetrical too, which is, I think they were really into that before. Man, that detail on these outfits is insane. I don't think I need to come up with uh, extra detail at the bottom, so I'll probably like crop in. And yeah, since they're wearing black, why not maybe support their silhouettes a little bit? Although again, with all these classical paintings, they really liked crushing details into shadow like into blackness oh man i really i have no idea is this supposed to be like that <laughs> let's just say it is this is not why i'm here anyway so let's think a little bit let's say this blue color would be mostly in here and the warm color will be at the bottom and more like horizontal and that's because this is like the air lit by the light coming from the window. It's like a god ray. And this is like the soft color of, uh, you know, furniture, floor being lit by this uh, light coming from the, from the window. And that's why we're getting these spots. When you think it through a little bit like this, it immediately feels a bit more natural. These even like random, pretty much abstract spots, they still should look like something on the planet Earth. And I see kind of a consistent lighting in here. It's soft and subtle as it should be very like, um, from a big light source in a way, which is exactly how it should go in a classical composition. So I see this uh, right side is softly shaded. So that's cool that they're not just random, you know? I know, should this color be brighter than the fur? In here, it's kind of arguable. Usually this thing is like white, right? I don't know how to even Google these. Victorian color? Yeah, as I thought, it's not Victorian. Rough right? It's called rough, which is funny because the dog is wearing it. 
was it intentional that this color actively looks darker than this one? Like, it's not impossible for the color to not be white, although this is obviously not actually an, an old painting. <laughs> well, like here, right, it is like darker, but not sure. Maybe that's just a painting like that. There are black versions. But anyway, my point is, there is nothing wrong with actually going ahead and making the color brighter, even if the dog's fur is kind of bright. Because I'm pretty sure when these colors are white, they're made to be like really white. That was probably a part of the charm. Like, I don't get it, but I can understand. During the times where soap wasn't a thing, wearing something white is quite a privilege. So I'm gonna take like this and this parts are the brightest spots in terms of lighting somewhere around there but of course fur is not that simple to shade because it's not a consistent surface it's a lot of sticks actually perpendicular to the surface so actually when they're sticking out here they would be collecting the most light or something like in here so it, it uh, creates like a bit of a more complex shading and i never really practiced it that much so i'm not 100% on how it is exactly it's supposed to work. But like this dog looks pretty fluffy. Therefore, I think this kind of almost reverse shading would make that fluffiness really shine. And that means we need to tone it down a little bit in here, actually going like the opposite almost. And yeah, in here, this surface is facing there, so it should be the brightest. Well, there's still fur, but fur in here doesn't stick out like this. It kind of goes like follows along with the surface. So that one is a no brainer. And yeah, I'm like mostly applying my own brushwork because for some reason I decided I have to make this fur work or this fur. And I'm just using my pretty strong texturized uh, whatever intense kind of brush like this. And I guess I'm mostly inspired by Sargent's uh, approach in painting, where his brushwork is super intense and like it takes over the whole reality and it's not a problem at all. So I'm pretty sure if he would be painting like a fluffy dog, it would still be painted with a bunch of stuff like uh, to show soft fur, you don't need a soft brush. That's the world I live in. <laughs> So, to make it soft, you just choose colors that will make it soft. It's not about the, you know, softness of the brush. The softness of the brush sort of makes things unconfident or just different overall, different quality. And the quality should be generally consistent everywhere. You can paint anything with any brush. So yeah, I'm literally, you see, picking up color in between the background and the color of the fur, and with my super sharp strokes, it starts looking soft. It's a sharp painting of a soft fur. Hmm? Not saying it's like totally what everyone has to be doing, but just an interesting thing to think about. I wonder if I was talking about exactly the same thing a year ago, when it was just the painting of the dog. Yeah, let's shade the nose this way a little bit as well. Like, I'm going for the light coming from over there, like this. And a little bit of the same stuff on the cat. Now I'm gonna try and shade down a little bit the, this whole mess of a rough color. Like, mostly I just want to be doing this, probably. And let's see, darker color... Let's go with the multiply just a little bit, just to have that difference. So this would actively look darker than this. Some light being caught by these uh, things sticking out since this is not a consistent surface. So yeah, a little bit like that, probably. It actually starts feeling a bit more three-dimensional thanks to this. I like that. And yeah, right there, I'll definitely shade down those folds. That would bring some extra touch to the, the whole geometry. Also, this is a wrong layer, but that's okay. 
I have one problem with the um, with the color in here. It was like at a certain point painted with like semi-transparent just black brush maybe. It it feels a bit dirty in here. I'll try to maybe fix it with like in a layer and color mode. I'll add some of that saturation and then I'll tone it down a lot to see where it works at all. All right, let's see how much can we actually add of those. Kind of like this, maybe? Yeah, it looks a bit more fun. Maybe not as red, a little bit closer to yellow. Yeah, this feels like a more of a happy, happy dog. And this is kind of dark. So yeah, this spot right here really makes a little bit of a difference in terms of shading. And it's like this only spot, nowhere else. Well, kind of, kind of the same thing going on here, actually. So let's maybe grab the same color and go over here as well. So yeah, that's whole translucency, bouncing lights and everything, introducing more saturation. That thing everyone loves to see. And the cat looks very unusual. Is there like a drawing underneath it? Meaning like maybe a traced photo or something. Also, it looks all weird because I scaled it up. So yeah, generally I'm pretty sure even if this color is dark, it should definitely be brighter on this side since I chose to have the lighting from that side. Or we chose, I don't know. Seems like the pets were shaded from that angle. And yeah, this is a little bit of like the light getting inside of this loop. Probably shouldn't get that dark, right? Although it probably does get dark somewhere. Like there are pretty dark shadows in there sometimes. In there, right in there. Because sure, it's a pretty deep fold, you know? Shouldn't overdo it or anything, but it's a deep and very narrow fold. Specifically where it's like facing at us, at the camera, that's where we can see right to the core, to the very deep part. So this is the area where we can and should show some of those deeper shadows. Otherwise the whole thing just looks washed out and not actually painted to the end, you know? These colors were probably like the final exam for painters back in the day when it was a thing. Prove that you really understand geometry, you know? <laughs> yeah, you see, a lot more, like, real looking immediately when we do that. And as it turns away from us and looking, like, over there, uh, that means anything that gets closer to the right is the deeper side. So it should get darker and in here kind of brighter. Probably just a lot of just white walls in there. It, it shouldn't be like specific lines going on anymore. Yeah, that feels a bit more appropriate to just do it like that. There's a lot more of them squished into a small area, so they just become some like that. Oh yeah, I think this is looking pretty cool. I dare not touching the rest of the outfits because I have no clue what's going on there. They're like, they're meant to like, like a zebra effect to uh, confuse the predator so they wouldn't understand the geometry of what's actually going on. It's like maximum contrast. But generally I would probably go with a soft brush and do a little bit of the gradient. That would definitely introduce some, you know, feeling of a soft lighting going on. Oh yeah, look at that. Immediately painting effect by just doing that. Maybe a bit too much. Also, the stick can kind of shine more. The stick. The Milord stick. I guess the highlights on the cat can be much brighter. So there we go. That's what I managed to do without ruining every single detail. I think I kind of like the way I changed the appearance of the dog, like uh, the silhouette right here. Maybe it's closer like this to the photo, but this way it feels fluffier and, uh, you know, a bit nicer, maybe. The fourth and the final patient today is Ilva Winter. Hi, Ilva. Hey, Boro. I was super busy with work this month and I barely had time to draw. Am I wrong or do you start every message this way lately? I kind of feel the same about painting. Have a lot going on. I hope it's not too late for this month. If it is, just take this one as my December submission. What? No. Totally fine. It's November 30. November means November. 
Mmm. Anyway, I really like this piece, but I feel like the contrast where the hair and the eye are overlapping is just off. It just looks off. I think you mean like the like orange hair and the skin are like of very close value and some hair is like blending like right here it's blending into the skin maybe that's what you meant because i didn't really notice that two colors that are of the same value look like a trip with the eyes a bit i'm also not sure about the nose to be honest i really try to implement the critique you gave me on one of my earlier pieces i'm just not sure i'm doing it correctly thanks so much for the help ilva all right, Ilva, let's see if I can improve anything in here. Really like the picture, very nice character, very nice style and shape design. You keep doing things better and better. It feels very intentional and like specific always, which is really fun. You mentioned some stuff about the face. I'm not sure, like maybe the geometry of the nose indeed is a bit off, but not like I'm the guy who can actually make it better. Uh, maybe like this. A slightly moved that nostril away. Maybe even stronger like this. And maybe not. Now the contrast between the eye and the hair in here. Well, one thing I would go with is maybe a bit of a stronger shadow underneath. Like it's a pretty long shadow. It feels like it could use stronger thing. Like I'm not sure if I understood correctly your point about the contrast or something feeling off. But one thing I find actually to be an issue is this, uh, the arm, the forearm and the hand. It seems like we need to work a bit more on making sure we convey that there's foreshortening going on, because right now it's just a very short forearm, kind of. Of course, the main tool for that is to turn it around more. But that's the problem, the actual hand really faces upwards and there's not a lot of bending going on, so the arm kind of goes down and then it's like really short. Like the palm is pretty much the length of the rest of, of the forearm, which is not really a thing, I would say. So I'd probably go mostly with extending the arm in general. But that's like, you know, that's to fix anatomy and not necessarily going to be better for composition. Maybe even, even a little bit like this, because this may already be okay, but then like this part, the shoulder is really long then. Like there's definitely um, pretty weird proportions on the arm. And finally the hand. I was looking at it like, what was the main issue I tried to understand? And first of all, like, I would probably shade this down a bit more to show the angle like this all is like facing downwards or something. That would help a little bit. But the main problem, I think, is that I tried to imagine like holding the stem with these three fingers and then using these two fingers to hold it as well forward. I don't know how how it's possible. The index finger kind of wants to point forward. It's not it's not a thing. That's why it feels really weird. It's either like I don't know. <laughs> like the main problem is probably in the in, in these fingers being completely closed usually if you hold something like this these fingers are kind of open or like a little bit like this but not obstructing where the flower is and if we completely close it it takes away from the index finger <laughs> It's not there anymore. And this is like a fist. It's completely closed. So I think this is the like the main part. We need to have this and this can change then. So I'll, I'll try to do that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think Pinky can even go a lot higher. Otherwise, we're kind of breaking something in here a lot. Ooh, no. 
Okay, it's still horrible and obviously unfinished, but you see how this is like super weird that it's like, it's like it's a fist that's facing the camera like this, and then suddenly the fingers that go like this, like there's really a problem with the, with the angles. And this is a bit more natural, although everything else is wrong about it. <laughs> and yeah, I guess aside from that, well, I would move it a little bit over here. That's my final stroke. Yeah, I feel like this works just so much better. And yeah, I, I think that forearm and the hand kind of look a bit more reasonable, because this is like a baby forearm all of a sudden. This feels a bit more consistent in terms of proportions. And yeah, aside from that, I guess I can only make it worse, so... All right, that'll be it for this month of Overpain. I already have one submission from Akuma right here, but since it was from December, I decided to keep it as the December overpain submission because I'm barely keeping up here. <laughs> My hat is full on winter mode right now. I can't do anything. Nonetheless, if any of you guys want me to overpaint your picture like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron in the overpaint tier, submit the picture with the message, I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Okay, that's not trapped.